It's Sunday, February 16th, 2025, and we've got uh, another update for you on the weather. A significant storm system is exiting the U.S. right now. We've got strong winds going through the eastern seaboard. We've got early heavy snow happening up in the interior northeast up into Canada. What's coming in behind that is a brief period of quieter weather and cooler weather, uh, but then, uh, yeah, you guessed it, there is another storm on the way. But before we get into the next storm, quick recap on this most recent recent one. Uh, we've got a lot of snow in the northeast. We've had some ice in the mid-Atlantic regions. And of course, last night we were live for 12 hours straight covering this severe weather with hail and wind across the Tennessee Valley down into the deep south. Well over 200 reports of wind damage, especially across Alabama and around Atlanta. Uh, we actually had some uh, really strong winds this morning. But by far, the biggest problem that we had with this most recent storm system was the catastrophic flooding that occurred in Kentucky, Virginia, West Virginia and Tennessee. Y'all, I cannot express to you how dire of a situation this is here in the uh, mountains of uh, eastern Kentucky and, and West Virginia and Virginia. Once again, this keeps happening and uh, this is one of the worst ones I've ever seen. Right now, entire communities are underwater after receiving up to six inches of rain in just 24 hours. We're talking about homes submerged, roads turned into rivers, and families being forced to evacuate in the middle of the night. Emergency crews have been working nonstop doing water rescues and sadly, we have already lost several people due to the floodwaters and uh, more are missing. Look, y'all know I don't like talking about much of anything other than the weather and I certainly don't like to ask for help and, and, unless I really need it. But this right here is exactly why we created the Y'all Squad. We've got teams ready to deploy to these communities right now, but we need your support to help make the biggest impact possible. Some of the finest folks in America here in the heart of Appalachia have lost everything and this is a catastrophic flood. It's exceeded every floodplain. A lot of people People don't have flood insurance that took on water from this. So we've got people's homes, their businesses, and their entire lives underwater, and it's going to be a very difficult situation to overcome. Here's what the Y'all Squad's doing right now. We're mobilizing supplies. We're getting ready to deploy uh, emergency relief supplies to places like Clarksville, Tennessee, Pikeville, Kentucky, Williamson, West Virginia, Hurley, Virginia, just to name a few. And we're planning to continue to help in these areas in several different ways, even after the water recedes uh, in terms of cleanup and individual assistance. But of course, the Y'all Squad isn't just me, and it's not just our small team here in Kentucky. It's all of us. We can't do this alone. Every single dollar donated goes directly to helping these communities, whether that's providing hot meals, emergency supplies, or helping families start the cleanup process. If you want to help make a difference, visit the theyallsquad.org right now and click the donate button. Even a small amount is going to make a huge difference. And if you can't donate, just help spread the word about the donations or just share this video because every single penny that this video generates I'm going to donate directly to the Y'all Squad. These communities need our help, and that's exactly what the Y'all Squad is here for. The Y'all Squad shows up. Uh, once again, if you want to make a tax-deductible contribution to our 501c3 nonprofit organization, the Y'all Squad, there's a link in the description, and we would appreciate it very much. Okay, looking into the future, we've got more weather on the way, and uh, our next big thing that we've got to tackle here is a major winter storm. Here's the Day 3 Winter Storm Outlook, where we've got an enhanced risk of uh, some sort of wintry precipitation, from Kansas City, once again, down through St. Louis, into western Kentucky, western Tennessee, maybe even as far south as uh, into northern portions of Little Rock. The winter action doesn't stop there. All the way out on the day four outlook, we've got a 40% probability of a significant winter storm from eastern Kentucky all the way over towards Maryland and Delaware. And then we've got a 20% confidence in that winter storm continuing up the east coast. This includes the coastal regions and also the interior northeast. Let's take a look at what that could look like on the GFS ensembles. Uh, here's our current storm causing a mess on the East Coast. It's going to skedaddle and get out of here by the time we get to 10 a.m. Monday morning. It's going to be a memory. Uh, lots of snow is going to be on the ground, though, in upstate New York, up through Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and uh, especially into Quebec. Uh, but check it out. Our next system is already showing itself over here uh, from the Pacific Northwest all the way down past the Intermountain West uh, into the plains as snow showers will start flying in Kansas City as early as 10 a.m. Monday morning. Things are going to intensify as some Gulf moisture gets involved here. Uh, by 10 a.m. on Tuesday morning, we could be having moderate snow in East Kansas, maybe some mixed precipitation around Oklahoma City. There is going to be some thunderstorm action and some heavy rain action in the deep south uh, in East Texas and southwest Louisiana uh, during the afternoon and evening hours on Tuesday. I'm not quite sure if that's going to be severe weather, but uh, it certainly could. So it's something that we're going to watch. But right now, it's just looking like some general heavy rain. Heavy snow is going to be moving into the St. Louis area, maybe 
around 1 a.m. Wednesday morning. Uh, we're going to have a, a mixed bag of precipitation around Memphis and Little Rock, northern Mississippi, uh, early in the morning on Wednesday as well. Uh, we are going to see that move across Middle Tennessee into Eastern Tennessee. Uh, Eastern Kentucky could be experiencing uh, some snow by 1 p.m. on Wednesday. And then look, another potential significant ice situation unfolding uh, where we've got some cold air damming happening on the eastern side of the Appalachian Mountains uh, in uh, North Carolina and South Carolina. That could bring about uh, some pretty heavy snow in the D.C. area once again over towards Delaware. And then things get a little bit less clear uh, after the storm passes the Appalachian Mountains. Some models uh, show this uh, getting stronger and hugging the coast and becoming a big nor'easter. And some show a more progressive just kind of floating uh, motion out to sea, which it would still bring snow to the I-95 corridor and the rest of the Northeast, but it wouldn't be quite as intense. And that's what a lot of the models are leaning towards right now. Let's talk snow totals. This is a uh, general idea of how much snow we could see. This is going to change. But through Wednesday, February 19th at 7 p.m., uh, we could have over 10 inches of snow in portions of eastern Kansas. Uh, we could have uh, over a foot of snow in south central Missouri. Uh, we're talking about maybe four or five inches in St. Louis, uh, six inches or so in Kansas City, and then way over there into southern Illinois, western Kentucky, eight to ten inches is going to be possible, maybe even around three inches as far south as into Memphis and Little Rock. Uh, snow, once again, is going to continue farther east. We could see a streak of three to six inches of snow going across central Kentucky into eastern Kentucky. The mountains of West Virginia, once again, will likely see well over ten inches of snow by the time this is all said and done. And then we could see an enhancement of snow totals from central Virginia up through the Delmarva uh, and then along the coast of New Jersey, New York, and uh, over there towards Cape Cod where uh, a widespread four to eight inches looks to be possible right now. Now, this is going to change. It could uh, come farther inland. We could see some higher totals in New York City, for example, uh, or it could go farther out to sea uh, and we see less snow over there. That's uh, this leg of the storm uh, I'm less confident in right now. This one, I, this actually looks pretty solid. I think that uh, that's pretty close to what we'll end up with. This one is more of a question mark. Another thing we've really got to keep an eye on here is the ice. Uh, there's two hot spots showing up. Uh, right here and right here on the first leg of the storm uh, through Wednesday. It does look like we might see a glaze of ice across the entire state of Arkansas and uh, Oklahoma and maybe as far east as into north portions of uh, Mississippi. And then maybe a more significant icing situation uh, unfolding in uh, North Carolina and South Carolina uh, as we go through Thursday. This could be an ice storm in North Carolina. We'll have more details on that tomorrow. And then all this stuff up here uh, that you're seeing is for the uh, storm that's going on today that we've been covering. So uh, lots of ice to be concerned about here, and this could cause power outages, so make sure you are prepared for that. Looking even further into the future, I'm sorry to tell you, but the southeast is going to remain cooler than average for the foreseeable future, uh, especially from the Ohio Valley down towards the southeast. But notice we've got some warmer temperatures trying to build up over here in the west. And actually, if we look at the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook, the one that goes all the way out to March 1st, it does look like there's going to be a little bit of a pattern flip on the way, so get ready for that. It's still going to be cooler than usual in the east, but uh, all of that warm air in the west is slowly moving east, and maybe as we get into March, uh, things are going to kind of trend in the uh, warm direction, or at least the normal direction for everybody that's dealing with uh, all this winter uh, over here east of the Rockies. And that's pretty much all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for being here and uh, allowing me to do this as a job. Uh, this is uh, just an amazing opportunity. I I'm glad I'm able to help and uh, once again I, I really hope that we can all come together and go to the yallsquad.org and raise a bunch of money for these folks in Appalachia and uh, in uh, portions of Tennessee. Uh, let's show the world what the Y'all Squad's all about and uh, yeah this is also going to help us do more as we get into spring right so we're about to have tornado season. We're going to do the same thing when there's a tornado in, in a town. We're going to try to get there fast and help out any way we can uh, fill the gaps between major government organizations and uh, and insurance companies. They don't cover everything, right? So we're going to try to get in there and uh, take care of everyone. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>